welcome back to another video. Now today, we are back on Sakura Succubus number two. Now, things are getting a little bit out of hand. Um, since yesterday's uh, escalation, I have to make sure uh, I avoid Hifumi at all times now, because uh, now that I realize what she's exactly doing, um, <laughs> I have to be super careful. So yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, I awake the following morning to a truly delicious smell, as I did the morning before that, and the one before that. Uh, I guess Hifumi must have woke early again, despite the Vugrulin's argument she had with AU. Hifumi seems like a reserved woman, but I'm starting to see that there's more to her than meets the eye. She has much more stamina than one might imagine, and she's quite proficient as twisting the truth to suit her own ends. Though a you should have had the upper hand in their dispute. Hifumi was able to fluster her. Truth be told, she flustered me quite a bit too. Same here. Moving on. She called herself a pushover, but that couldn't be further from the truth. She's surprisingly brazen. But I don't dislike that. In fact, after seeing all the facets of Hifumi's character, I'm more intrigued by her than ever. That's why I decided upon awakening to set off to the kitchen. I'd love to continue our talk from last night. And I'm pretty hungry too. Fumi's falling for the shit. And this is why I was trying to tell y'all. God damn it! I dressed in my typical attire, then leave my room. It's early in the morning, it's only seven, or thereabouts, and I can't hear anything as I walk through the halls. I guess everybody's asleep. I feel like I should be sleeping too. My every movement is tingling with tiredness, and I keep pausing to yawn. But I already left the warmth of my futon. It'd be silly to retreat now. I want to speak to Hifumi. What does she really want from me? Is she interested in me like Ayu and Cosmo seems to believe? Does she want to make me her slave? And why are other succubi so weary of her? Is it simple jealousy or is it something more? This mysterious swirl around me even denser than the scent of Fumi's miso soup. I pad down the hallway. I pushed open one of the sliding doors, then crossed the garden, the separate complex that houses the kitchen and the dining room is only a few feet away. A warm breeze blows rumples my hair and stirs the leaves of the trees. Other than the sound of the wind, the garden is completely silent. Uh, I think it's pretty, oh sorry, it's quite peaceful. You don't hear silence like this back in Tokyo. The city is full of hustle and bustle at all hours. There's always so much noise. I entered the separate building, removing my shoes at the front door, and slip into a pair of wooden sandals. Then I make my way to the kitchen. Hey, Fumi. When I open the door, I find Fumi. She's all alone, as she was the first time I met her in the kitchen. I guess the other employees of this Roken are busy settling everything, oh, everything up uh, in the dining room. Hifumi's wearing an apron over her kimono. I guess that's to protect her expensive clothes from stray spotted, uh, splot, spl uh, splattage, excuse me, splattages on miso soup. 
Despite these precautions, however, her long sleeves have been left to hang loose. She hasn't bothered to secure them with a Suzuki. Is she confident enough in her cooking abilities that she doesn't need to secure her sleeves? You would have thought her long sleeves would get in the way, but apparently not. They don't seem to hinder her for me in the slightest. She continues to stir her miso soup, which is bubbling away in a pot on the gas plate. Her sleeves seem in danger in draping into the soup, but it never happens. Fumi's motions are extremely elegant and well precise. <clears throat> she must have done this numerous times. With her long dark hair and her traditional clothes, Fumi looks like a quintessential Japanese beauty. I defy any man to look at her. It's all in the muggy uh, kitchen. <laughs> I almost said chicken. And not to th not think, wow, she would make a good wife. Oh, Hiroki. Hifumi must have heard me into the kitchen because she turned and offered me a sweet smile. To what do I owe the pleasure? I was just wondering how you are. And you were being pretty mean to you yesterday. I was worried. Oh, yes. You were there to witness that, weren't you? Hifumi smiles roughly. Um, I apologize that you had to see such a shameful display. Hiroki, whatever must you have thought of me? I said and did a lot of embarrassing things, but I can assure you I did not mean any of it. It was all that. I was merely trying to fluster you so she would leave me be. I love my little sister, but not in that way. I far prefer the attentions of men. Yeah, uh, I figured as much. Don't worry about it. Hey, you look pretty perturbed about the whole thing. Her face was kind of funny. I almost wish I'd taken a photograph. That must be amusing, yes, but I doubt she would be like she would like that. She's very particular about her looks. Being a celebrity, she placed a good deal of importance of parading her personal image. Being famous sounds exhausting. Oh, it isn't so bad. The work is hard, yes, but it has its perks. Specifically, having supportive fans like you, of course. Hifumi offered a serene smile, which makes my stomach do a somersault. I thought Hifumi looked attractive last night, wearing nothing but a towel, but the kimono and apron combination is a classic. Can't be beaten. It's a shame my provocations were unable to deter you. I cried out most brazenly, but she refused to back down. And Fumi sighs. <sighs> if only I was better at being firm with her like Marina, then she wouldn't treat me with such disrespect. I don't know about that one. I use pretty disrespectful to Marina too. Yes, I suppose she is. She really is quite the handful. She's very fury and passion and stubborn too. Once she gets the idea into her head, it's most important to distraught her. Uh, I understand why she dislikes me so, but I have since mend my ways. I've tried to make mends and well, sorry, but she nurses. If she nurses her grudge, grudge, regardless, I can't speak. She even managed to turn Cosmos against me. This girl seems to be considered some sort of villain. Most upsetting. Ah, now this is an interesting kernel of information. Seems like Afumi did do something to earn. 
AU's ire after all. I wonder what. I'd like to ask her before I have the choice. Oh, goodness. Kifumi looks back at her miso soup. I was so caught up in an idea of chatter, I forgot my soup. It's bur it will burn if I don't turn off the heat. I apologize, Hiroki, but I need to focus on cooking. Can we postpone our conversation? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Thank you for being so patient, dear. Why don't we talk after breakfast? You can I can come to your room if you like. Uh, does that sound all right? Ah, that's fine. I'll see you later then. Yes, indeed. That would be lovely. And Hiroki? Hifumi's indigo eyes shine with a playful luster. I hope you're hungry. Breakfast today will be delicious. Please eat a lot and grow strong and healthy. There's nothing that would make me happier. I love looking after people. <sighs> I eat breakfast in the dining room of Marina, Cosmos, and Au. Like Fumi promised, it's delicious. The white rice hot steamy, the grilled mackerel full of flavor, miso soup full and rich. After eating my full, I return to my room in hopes in reuniting with Fumi. I feel tired after consuming so much food and my stomach aches a little. <sighs> I yawn. My fatigue starts to creep up on me. I really like to lie down. Though I came here to relax, I can't. I don't think I've gotten all that much sleep. My head feels heavy and the allure of my futon is incredibly powerful. I'm just a mere human. I can't resist the call of my sheets a second longer. Sorry, Afumi. I really gotta take a nap. I crept beneath my sheets and rest my head on my pillow. Going to sleep right after breakfast my, might be a bit slovenly, sure, but I think I've earned this privilege. I have to wake up early every morning to commute to work. I deserve a break. I turn around in my futon trying to get comfortable. Yeah. I yawn again. This time, I don't bother trying to strife it. If Umi isn't here, maybe she, she isn't coming. That being the case, I don't have to worry about being presentable. I can just relax. My eyes fell shut. I can feel myself sliding exorable into slumber when... Hiroki? I heard a musical voice from the other side of the folding door and the gentle rap of knuckles. Are you in there, Hiroki? Would you like to talk? Oh, oh! I sit up hurriedly, disturbing my futon. <sighs> so, Hifumi didn't forget. She re she's really come to see me. The thought is a heartening one, but I still can't shake the fringes of sleeping that clinges to me. I want to, at I want at least about five minutes. Oh well, since Hifumi came to see me. It'll be rude to turn her away. Yeah, I'm in here. You can come in. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for disturbing you. Ah. How you doing, cutie? Uh, the sliding door of my room opens, and Hifumi steps inside. She closes the door behind her, then looks at me. I'm still sitting up on my futon. My heart... My hair! <laughs> my hair! My, not my heart, excuse me. Um, I must look blurry, uh, blurry and half asleep. But Hifumi's expression softened into a look of motherly concern. Oh dear, did you not get enough rest the night before, Hiroki? I guess not, no. I wanted to sleep in, but I've gotten used to waking up early. My job must have conditioned me. Oh, you poor baby, you do look exhausted. Why don't you rest, rest your weary head upon my lap? Hifumi sinks to the floor, her kimono pulling around her. The patterning fabric of her kimono strains across her thighs in a truly delectable manner. <sighs> I'd love to rest my head in the lap of hers, but is that really all right? Of course it is. I wouldn't offer otherwise. Now, please come over. 
Let me look after you. I've envel I envelope you and my just like as my mother might. That's very kind of you, but I I Ifumi skeptically. When your legs go numb, kneeing on the ground like that, I don't want you getting pins and nails. Oh, how considerate. You really do think of everything. I appreciate your thoughtfulness, dear, but you needn't to worry. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, by the way. I forgot about pronouns and all that shit, so. <sighs> anyway, um, I'm accustomed to kneeling for long periods of time, particularly on tatami mats. I have more stamina than you could imagine. She's used to kneeling, huh? I wonder if that's some sort of uh, emphasis, infamism, infamism. I don't know. Um, Fumi, see, well, must see my muzzing. I'm not the most subtle of guys, but she because she giggles. I kneel when I play cook. So, of course, I'm quite fond of the game. Do you not know? All oh, right, yeah, I'm sorry. Yam Yamamoto uh, Fumi is well known for her love of all things classically Japanese, classical Japanese poetry included. I think I remember reading once that she was a classic Karuta player. She is a woman of many talents. If that's really okay, then I'll then maybe I'll take up on your on that offer. By all means, please do. <laughs> Hifumi's gentle laughter prompt me onwards. Brother. I can feel you in so many ways you have no idea. Oh boy. Look at those melons. Ignore me. <laughs> I rest my head upon her lap, sighing as I do so. It really does feel good. Her thighs are incredibly yielding. And they're so soft, too. I feel like I'm drowning in a marshmallow sea. So, how do you, does that feel? One of Hifumi's hands rests upon my hand. Her dust slendering fingers weaves her way through my hair. I can feel loose tendrils of dark trenches brushing against my bare cheek. I can smell her too, soft and fragrant. Like orange blossoms, maybe? Could that be the scent of the perfume she's using? Are you alright, Haruki? Haruki's light, li li uh, litting voice washes over me like a lullaby. All in the while, her fingers continue to run through my hair. Hifumi's lap makes for a wonderful pillow. She's very soothing. Feel nice, thank you, Hifumi. <laughs> You're welcome. Hifumi continues to toy with my hair, her fingertips brush back and forth against my scalp, grazing against gently, so I shatter. Sparks are starting to run up and down my spine. This feels way too good. I feel like I can melt into a puddle. Fumi's touch is way too Im uh, intimate to, merely, to be merely motherly. She's acting like a lover might. I had hoped that I would cut for you, and yet, Hifumi's brow forward. You would never be able to sleep like this. Your shoulders are just too stiff. Or so stiff, sorry. You need to try to relax, Hiroki. And trust yourself in me. I won't hurt you. I know that, but... But what? This kind of feels... This feels kind of wrong. How is it wrong? You're famous. If any of your fans see us like this, then... Fumi presses a white tip against my leg. They won't see us. There's nobody here other than you and me. The fans will be none, none than wiser. 
Not even a you can barge in and interrupt us now. I finally have you all to myself. I want to surround you, snare you, and possess you. If only, only a few moments. My sisters are closely acquainted with you. It seems unfair that I should be left out. I've grown quite fond of you, Hiroki. But won't you let me soothe you, please? Hifumi looks at me sweetly, her dark eyelashes flutter. I feel like I should resist, and you would be pissed if she finds out about this, but the cadence of Hifumi's voice has cast a spell over me. I can't resist it. See, this was... This was exactly my concern. You see what I mean? Of course he fucking falls for it! I still don't know what Hifumi did earn... Well, sorry. I still don't know what Hifumi did to earn a you and Cosmos distrust, or if she has any other mo- other ter- a ter- a ter- oh, sorry. Any ulterior motives. But right now, I can't bring up to worry about such things. None of- none of it seems to matter. All right, then. If you want, you can spend a bit more time. I won't resist you. Oh, Rocky. Rocky's eyes soften. Thank you for accepting me. And thank you for giving me a chance. I will treat you very, very gently. I will wash away all your worries, but please can't worry. And then, you will feel the content as you have never known before. Huh. When I woke up from a long nap as I lay on my futon, Fumi is nowhere in sight. She must have took me up. The thoughts of... The thought is a flattering one. A bit, somewhat embarrassing, and I find myself, I find my cheeks heating up. What did I do to be worthy of this pretty angel anyway? Kafumi must have done a lot for me, but I don't think I've done a whole bunch for her. I haven't done any, I haven't done her any favors. Oh well, maybe I can ratify that? Or rectify that, excuse me. For as long as I stay under the same roof, I'll do my best to repay Hifumi for her kindness. I won't let her good deeds go unrewarded. I'm guessing she gave us a bag massage. Good timing. She did say her back was stiff, so fuck it. And with a bit of luck, I'll be able to figure out her past, too. There has to be more to Hifumi than she's letting on. I was wondering what it could be. <sighs> Alright. Uh, I think I'm going to have to hold it here, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. This was a hectic situation. Hiroki definitely let her in, of course. Which I should have expected, but at the same time, it seems like nothing really happened. Um, if anything, um, it seems like they got the clean version of this. So... If they got the clean version of this, thank God. But on the other hand, it seems like he just gave me a back massage and nothing really happened. So, we're cool at this point. So, uh, anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to this. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the support. We are so close to our goal right now. And we're getting very, very close. Very close, guys. And without a doubt, I really appreciate every single one of y'all. It's been Zach, guys. Later.